in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you for your presence here. We thank you for your power and your anointing in this place, Lord. For you are a good God, Lord, Lord. Even as we get into your word, which is the truth, and the truth that always sets us free. We just want to thank you, Lord. This time, help us, O Lord, to learn at your feet as we sit yes. with open hearts. Speak to us this morning. Yes. Holy Spirit of God, you are the great teacher. Amen. And teach us, O oh Lord, teach us your ways from you, Lord. Even as I share, I pray, cover me by your precious blood. Amen. And let your word, your word alone come forth. In Yeshua's mighty name, in most holy name, we make this prayer. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. So today we will look at the book of 1st and 2nd Corinthians and the character we will be looking at is Apollos who is mentioned there in this book the characteristic is teaching so last week we saw the book of Romans and uh, we saw Phoebe the servant of the church just two lines so to say written about her but what a powerful message we had last week as well Pastor. we enjoyed it even at Passover meeting people were Sarah, just two lines of this lady mentioned in the word of God but when you have a teacher anointed by the presence and the power of God even those two lines can change our lives Amen. Hallelujah Amen. We will continue with another servant of the church He was a teacher, it was Apollos He is also mentioned by a few lines here in the book of Corinthians and we will focus on teaching, teaching uh, 5th September we celebrated Teacher's Day, I was reading one of the posts, the world post which says teaching is a profession that creates all other professions. Wow. Yes. Yeah? And uh, that's what the world says and that's a fact of the world. Our biblical teaching, I believe, is a passion. It is not a profession. Yes. Biblical teaching is a passion. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's where we differ. But praise God, I'm saying, Amen. God bless all the teachers who are forming the young minds. And praise God for all Christians who are teachers in the world. Amen. Because God Amen. has actually gifted you with an anointing. You don't only have a head knowledge, but you have the heart, the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. He's inside of you, the great teacher. So you will find ways to nurture those minds yes. with values from the word of God. If you are a teacher and a Christian teacher, teaching in the world or in the church, God bless you. Amen. 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 Teaching is a very important aspect of uh, discipleship because Jesus in the Great Commission said, go and make, go preach the gospel and make disciples. Yes. In case you need to make disciples, disciples can't be made without proper teaching. Mm -hmm. So teaching is very important uh, to make disciples and also for each one of us so that we are able to give an answer to everyone who asks us a reason for a hope that is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. So teaching uh, is very important and teaching as a human profession relies only on head knowledge but as Christians when the Spirit of God, the great teacher takes over, you will transform lives. Yes. Change destinies Thank you, by the word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many teachers here this morning? Hallelujah. Alright, praise God. A few of you I believe by the end of the message, every hand should go up. Yeah. Because each, each Christian is called to be a teacher. Hallelujah. Teach to the best of his ability. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you start teaching to the best of your ability, you may sin for yourself. When you rely on his ability, you are the best teacher. Amen. 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 So today yes. we look at this book, First and Second Corinthians. This was written. This book was written by Paul himself at, in around 56 AD, while he was in Ephesus during his third missionary journey. He was informed about his church that he had planted. Five, six years before, in 51, 52 AD, he had planted the church of Corinth, church at Corinth, rather. During his second missionary journey, when he planted this church, Paul was writing to this church. And the city of Corinth 
which when Paul visited in 51 52, the city was not at all what we may understand or we may think of because there is a church in that city, so we may think of great. But the city of Corinth was a major influence throughout that part of the world. It had a population of around 7 lakh people at that time. However, it was the sin city. It had a great temple of uh, the goddess Aphrodite, who was a goddess of love, and there were thousand temple prostitutes. And people on moral holiday would go to Corinth. People would say, I have got nothing to do with morality. Those guys would go to Corinth, live in sin. That city reeked of sin. Prostitution, debauchery was a part of that city. In fact, immoral people were then being called like being a Corinthian. If you were immoral, people said, what, you are being a Corinthian? So it was such a big insult. On the lowest of low to be called Corinthian. Imagine the kind of city that the city was. And Paul visited in the city. He went to the synagogue as was his practice. And then he was, obviously the Jews threw him out. They argued with him. Then he moved out. And from there, synagogue leader was the first, actually, who came to Christ. And then he, he met Aquila and Priscilla, who we see are very important people in uh, this context. Meeting with them, then we started the Corinthian church. So this was a church that was set in a city full of fornication. And so this church had some issues. When Paul left on from there, Paul was there for one and a half year and God, the Holy Spirit spoke to Paul saying, do not fear, preach. Which means Paul would have been in such terrible danger at that point, yet without caring for his life, he preached. Praise God. Praise God. And this city with two thirds of slave came to Christ. However, just by receiving Christ and sitting on it, you do not be a Christian. You need to get rid of the old self. And that was the trouble here. People had not got rid of the things around them. And when Paul left, in three, four years, the cares of the world and the friends and family who was not a part of the church got into their lives and pressurized them probably. And that's why they were saved. In fact, in Corinthians, Paul mentions about, he's saying such sin which is not even named among Gentiles. Oh my. We just discussed about how a sinful city this was. Greater sin was in the church. Beloved, if anyone thinks that just by attending church, you have a ticket to heaven, God is reminding you, that's not the case. We need to get rid of the old self. Praise God. The very fact that people today attend church is because they have a commitment to Christ. Hallelujah. They want to change. And I appreciate each one who's coming week after week on Zoom, in person, we will not have been perfect. None of us are, none of us will ever be till the time the perfection comes. Absolutely. Yet, the very effort of living a life that is holy and acceptable unto God and desiring to be taught by the Holy Spirit draws us to congregate together. Amen. Amen. So praise God and appreciate each one here this morning. So as Paul left after one and a half years, we see Apollos who comes in in this. We will read from the book of Acts chapter 18 and verse 24, we see the ministry of Apollos. Now a certain Jew named Apollos born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in scripture came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of the He was accurate in the scriptures. He had the zeal of God. He taught with love, gusto. He taught with all that he had, all that he knew. He was faithful with all that he knew and God touched him. Hallelujah. He knew only the baptism of John. So what was about the baptism of John probably? So the baptism of John was about forgiveness of three sins through repentance, getting baptized in the water and awaiting the Messiah was the baptism of John. However, the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the ascension in heaven and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was something that was missing. Important aspects of Christianity. Yet, 
the base was there. It was not that this man knew rather. He didn't know about it. So whatever he knew, the repentance, the baptism of repentance, he preached. And he was eloquent, which means he was excellent with the scriptures. He was a Jew born in the city of Alexandria, which was a spiritual capital and, and all the big heads would go there, so to say. These guys were excellent with scriptures. So he was a great teacher in what he knew. Yet now he was about to encounter the greatest teacher. Amen. God the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes, let's read. So, so he began to speak boldly in the synagogue when Aquila and Priscilla heard him. They took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. More accurately. More accurately. Wow. He says you are there 50-60%. The balance 40% is already taking place. Let us tell you about it. He was open. God. You know why he was open? Because he was a teacher of God. He knew only God can open hearts and teach the scriptures. Secondly, he knew and he believed the scriptures. And I'm sure Akron and Priscilla from the scriptures showed him that Jesus Christ was Lord. You remember that Bible study that Jesus had with the disciples on the road to Emmaus? Starting from Moses said, the prophets, I'm sure he Michael and Priscilla gave him that Bible study. See, see the scriptures point towards this man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And not only did he live, but died, buried, rose again, and, is, and has ascended to the Father and has given us the help of God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. So when he was corrected, he received correction. He was not very staunch in his beliefs. People were staunch. And not open to the move of the Holy Spirit will not be taught. So when you approach such people, you need to pray and ask for God, the Holy Spirit, to open their eyes. So when you speak to them, He will speak through you. Amen. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. As we continue, before that we see what exactly He taught. Acts chapter 19 verse 1. It happened when Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. Finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? And they said, Into John's baptism. This is where Ephesus, where Apollos was. He says, We have not heard about the Holy Spirit, but we were baptized in the baptism of John. What Paul did? Paul said, John and his baptized the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after them, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. You can be a Christian, you can know the scriptures, yet you may not have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Even today, there are churches which sadly do not acknowledge the move of the Holy Spirit. They are little ahead of Apollos, but much behind what the truth of the gospel is. The full gospel is God the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. He moves and He does things through us. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is absolutely important doctrine for a born again believer. Hallelujah. And it can be received through laying on of hands. In case anyone yes. who is listening, so the people over here have been baptized by the Holy Spirit, they have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and also speak in tongues. In case you are not releasing the gift of tongues, meet us after the service, we will pray with you. Do not get caught up with the lies of the devil. He wants to restrict your ministry by restricting you from moving in the spirit. And anyone listening, if you've not been sure about the move of the Holy Spirit, be in touch. We will, like Aquilus, Aquila and Priscilla, we will talk to you about the Holy Spirit. And we will pray with you. And God will be Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then we will continue back in chapter 18, verse 27. When he desired to cross to Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to see him. When he arrived, he greatly helped those who believed through grace. For he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. 
The moment he accepted Jesus Christ, he publicly refuted people and he showed them from the scriptures that Jesus is Christ. Beloved, anyone who is born again should not have any fear proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have any fear, the love of God is not perfected in you. If you have any fear, get rid of the fear. Ask God the Holy Spirit to get rid of the fear and speak boldly. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. After resuming from the lockdown, we have been a meditating church. Ah, not much. <laughs> not much happening in terms of shouting hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad I didn't put you to sleep already. Alright, so praise God. We will continue. Now he is a changed man, Apollos. And now when he ministers to this church in Corinth, after Paul left, Apollos ministered. The church was amazed by his teaching. And then we see in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians when Paul writes. He says, some of you say, I am a Paul, I am of Apollos. Apollos became such a strong teacher. People actually equated him with Paul in the Corinthian church. Strong teacher of God. But people were fooled by the spirit of division. In the same church, favorite preachers. Never get into that. The word of God, God has no favorites. The word of God is very clear. Anyone who shares the word of God under the answer of the Holy Spirit is and should be our favorite preacher. Hallelujah. Praise God. So as we continue, we will look at teaching, which is who are now capable of teaching. Parents are capable of teaching. Deuteronomy 11, 9. The word says, you shall teach them to the children. Speaking of them when you sit in your house, God commanded the parents to teach their children the law in your testament. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. That when he grows up, he shall not depart from the faith. So, any parents here? Yes. So, any teachers here? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. You are an excellent teacher for your child. You may not be the favorite teacher of your child, but, but, you, are the, but you are the one who has formed the basis. You are the one who has trained up the child. So now, the children can listen from here, there and everywhere and may not acknowledge you as a great teacher. Some children may say, Are, where you don't preach from the pulpit, you are not a teacher. I didn't see you any Sunday preaching from the pulpit. Yes, those who are gifted by the Lord are preachers and teachers from the pulpit. Yet every parent is the teacher by the unction of God for their Hallelujah. 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 So be, so be the best teacher. Parents. And you don't only have to be a natural parent. If you're a spiritual parent, yes. probably you've committed your life to the Lord, to the family, never got married. You've committed your life to a cause. It's okay. But you have spiritual children. Yes. If you do, teach. Spiritual parent doesn't have to be 30, 40, 60. <laughs> Any age and above. You can be 12, 16, 20 and be a spiritual teacher. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. So be the best teacher. The Levites were supposed to be teachers. Leviticus 10, 11, God commanded the Levites to be teachers. And in 2 Timothy 2, 2, Paul encouraged Timothy, he says, What you heard from me, meditate and, and you have to teach others. Find faithful men, teach them, so they can be teachers. This is how you make or create more teachers. Yes. Pastor says, good leaders or other great leaders are the one who create more leaders. Yes. I would apply the same thing and say great teachers are the ones who create more teachers. Amen. 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 So praise God, create more teachers. The ancestors, Jeremiah 9, 14. The ancestors, in Jeremiah 9, 14, they said, but they have walked according to the dictates of their own hearts, which their fathers taught them. What the ancestral teaching and the traditional teaching of men is rubbish, it will only bring bondage because they are traditions of men. Do not teach traditions of men, teach from the word of God. 
Colossians 2, 6, 8. He says, Therefore, as you receive Christ the Lord, be rooted and built up in Him. And then he goes on, he says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to the Christ. Watch out church, for teachers today who teach not from the word of God. They teach fables and their own principles and even sometimes they want to apply the worldly principles into the Christian teaching and say, this is what the world is. By the way, they are not aware of that world, where that world got that from. The world actually got it from the Bible. If you are a great teacher of God, the concept from the world, you will find them in the Bible first. Yes. And you will teach them from the Bible and not try to, do not try to fit Christianity into the mold of the world. It will never fit because it was never created to fit that way. It was created so that the mold of the world is broken and you come back to the mold in which you were created. In the image and likeness of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be careful of teaching of people. Titus 2, 3 to 5. Older women are encouraged by Paul. He says, Older women likewise be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine. I want the women who are drinking wine during Paul's time as well. Teachers of good things that they admonish young women to love their husbands, to love their children, and to be discreet, chaste. Homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. As older women, I'm not saying old in terms of grey hair, but as senior women in Christ, you can be an older woman at even 20. If you are born in a Christian family and you've grown up in a Christian family, then you are a senior person in Christ. You have to encourage others to be chess. And it's not only for women to teach women. The women have to teach their sons as well. Proverbs 6.20 He said, My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake the law of your mother. The mother is responsible in many ways to teach both the children. I'm not saying it's only her responsibility and she should sit at home. No. The gospel liberates women. And that's why we see a lot of scriptures which are misapplied or misappropriated by teachers. Saying, Paul said the women should not talk in church. Paul said this, Paul said that. The gospel liberates. In fact, the women were so liberated that they became unruly at that time. And that is why Paul had to write, saying, calm down, take it easy. So the gospel is the, the true gospel always liberates women. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, there are no Jews, no Greek, no man, no woman, no slave. Remember that scripture? That's true. It's always true. Praise God. Nature, 1 Corinthians 11, 14, nature also teaches us about Christ. Alright. Significance of teaching. Matthew 4, 23. Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Preaching and teaching go hand in hand. Jesus preached outside and then when he became disciple, he taught them. When you go outside, you preach the good news to people and then teach them the ways of the Lord. So a good preacher is a good teacher. A good teacher is a good preacher. And every Christian has to be a good teacher and a good preacher. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't have to be eloquent with words. You don't have to know many scriptures if you are new. If you are old then you might as well know. But what you need to know is just preach the good news. And get them and then you teach them. In case you find it difficult, bring them to the church. Bring them to the cell groups. And teaching will take place there. Sound out for But preaching and teaching both are important. It is given by divine calling. Ephesians 4 11. The fivefold ministry consists of teaching. Teaching is a divine calling. Hallelujah. First Timothy 3 2. It is necessary for bishops and your overseer need to be a good teacher of the word of God. It's also necessary for bond servants. 2 Timothy 2 24 to 26. A servant of the Lord must not fall but be gentle to all. He himself must be teachable, humble. And then you will be able to teach people. Hallelujah. And Acts chapter 20, 20, Paul teach or rather taught house to house. He said, and I have kept back nothing that was helpful and proclaimed to you and taught you publicly and from house to house. There were public meetings, there were house to house meetings. Are we doing the same? Yes. There are public meetings which are on Sundays basically and other churches are having on Saturdays, but majorly on Sundays, that is our abundant life churches all across. And then there are house to house teaching. And that's why we are encouraging. This is the first century church. We are encouraging each one of you to open your house. And by sharing Galatians 6 6, 
He says, let him who is taught the word share not good things with whom him who teaches. So whoever teaches you, it is not wrong for you to share your good things with them. If you are in the world and a Bible teacher is teaching you, you can share your goods with them. It's not wrong. The authority of teaching is derived from Christ. Matthew 28, 19, 20, when Christ gave the great commission, he gave us the authority to teach. Yet that teaching can only be effective when it is empowered by the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26, Jesus said, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things. Hallelujah. Amen. God the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. People like to misappropriate this quote as well and say, The Helper is someone else. Do not be deceived. The word is very clear. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the yes. Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The Holy Spirit is the only helper promised by Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he will only talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he will only share from the written word of God, the inspired 66 books of the Bible. Anything other than that is not of God. Hallelujah. And it is taught by the Lord, Isaiah 54, 13. What a wonderful promise. Anyone carrying the Bible, I hope everyone is carrying the Bible. Please underline this verse, Isaiah 54, 13, in case it is not underlined already. In a beautiful verse, Sister Bella told us years ago, and we hold on to it, and she gave us a good uh, picture. It says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord. Amen. And great shall be the peace of your children. So whenever, as Christian parents, if you are worried about your children going astray at times, acting rebellious at times, it's okay, it's just a phase. Pray for them. They have not gone away. Why? Because the Lord promised. He says, all your children. I feel it also means all your spiritual children as well. Amen. This is my interpretation. All your children shall be taught by the Lord. Amen. And great will be their peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So in case anyone Amen. is struggling with your child right now, right. this word is for you. Your children, your child, all your children shall be taught by the Lord and they will be their peace. Yet, do not give up. Pray. Amen. Amen. Pray for them. And it originates in Revelation, Galatians 1, 12. Paul says, I was neither taught by man, but by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. So, now, the objects of teaching, Psalms 27, 11, 25, 4, 5, Psalms 119, all these talk about, the word of God teaches us God's way, God's path, God's law, God's will. Everything is there in the word of God. Amen. Titus 2, 12 says, teaches us to live in holiness. Hallelujah. Titus 2, 12. It says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in the present age. God's word teaches us to live in holiness. Holiness is not a thing of the past. It is not a thing of the Old Testament. New Testament. Be ye holy, because he who calls you is holy. holy. That doesn't mean by whatever we do, we can rely on holy. We have to rely on his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And God teaches us the spiritual truths. Hebrews chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. And God says, No one will need to teach them, I will teach them by my Holy Spirit. That's the new covenant. Right. Hallelujah. Right. And finally, the last segment which says perversion of teaching. Important segment. In Old Testament, Isaiah 9 15, the false prophets, and Micah 3 11, the false priests were teaching wrong doctrines to the people. At the time of Jesus, the traditionalists were there. Matthew 15, 9. Jesus quoted, he says, In way they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandment of men. Traditional things, commandment of men are not doctrines. Doctrines are only found in the word of God. Hallelujah. And in the new covenant, today we have false teachers. 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 3. I will read this. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, 
giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy. They are deceiving, they are teaching doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, which means they teach one thing and their lives are something else. Having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidden to marry and commanding to abstain from fools which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. On a lighter note, poke. Don't get into all those false doctrines. These are false teachers. And secondly, Judaism, Acts 15, 1. They say, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. So, people are teaching even today. Trying to get into Judaism. We understand Judaism and we apply the feast. And Pastor keeps saying, Jesus has fulfilled the feast. The Jews are to, commanded to keep the feast. Christ fulfilled yes. the feast. And Christians are to apply the feast. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So also with the commandments. The Israelites are still following the commandments. Jesus fulfilled the commandments. And we have to apply the commandments and live yeah. with the greatest commandments that he gave. Two, which fall concise into one. Love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The greatest yes. commandment. First Corinthians chapter 13. Hallelujah. Alright. Now, what, what false teachers and Judaizers do is that they create false believers. You heard this for the first time? Alright. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 3 to 4. For the time will come when they will not endure some doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. The New Testament believers in today's time who do not like correction will heap up for themselves teachers who teach only sugar coated things, who bring no conviction. The word is encouraging. I shared with the exciting leaders a few days ago, one of the teachers, new guys, very inspiring, powerful messages. Week after week, few years ago I heard it. Right from that time I felt something was wrong. However, now what is happening is, now if you hear the words, 80% of the teaching is perfect from the word of God. Balance 20%. Just to create sensationalism, they use wrong things. Walking dead was in the Bible. I'm not saying this. Paul teaches He says, I would rather have you keep sinning rather than quitting. Teaching the word of God, saying this from the pulpit. Problem is, because that one thing slip, you listen to the AT and you want only the encouraging messages, you will keep listening to this fellow and you will take the teaching, hook, line and sinker. And slowly you will start becoming a false believer. Now what will happen is, suddenly, if, if we, as this church, she teaches sound doctrine, word, scripture, in order, every book of the Bible, every year, you will suddenly start thinking, Arre, we talk about a lot of Old Testament things. We talk about a lot of old conviction, repentance. The new preachers, hey, there is change. People are coming, thousands are coming to the church. You think he's a false teacher? No, thousands are coming to the church. So what he's saying must be right. Crowd is not a sign of true doctrine. Because narrow is, narrow is the way. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Beloved, teaching of the word of God even today must bring conviction. Otherwise, it's not teaching. It should have the blood, as far as the blood drip, the blood should drip from the gospel that we preach. It should bring conviction. It should make people feel uncomfortable. Yes. Not so that they leave or whatever. No. Undergirding with love. Okay. Yet the word of God will convict. Not your words. You don't have to be rude to people. And say you are a sinner. No. Just give them the word of God. The word of God will convict them. And yes. transform them. Okay. Hallelujah. They will turn away their ears from the truth and turn aside to fables. A lot of fables are being taught. Be careful of whom you listen to. Right. Don't follow false teachers. YouTube. 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 Be a teacher of God. But not from the WhatsApp University. <laughs> from the University of the Word of God, the Bible. Get a commentary. If you want to really dig deep into the Word of God. Don't take the easy way out. Google, YouTube, this you, that you. Don't follow false teachers or you will end up, end up being a false believer. Be open to correction even if you feel you've been a Christian for a very long time. Apollos was a great teacher, yet he was open to correction. When corrected by the word, not by people. Be open to correction if it comes from the word of God. 
Do not rush to be a teacher of God's word. James 3, 1 says we will have a stricter judgment if you are a teacher of God. Yet do not be scared because you know, each one of us is called to be a teacher of the word of God to the ones who do not know. So how do we be excellent teachers? Submit to God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Read the Bible. Prepare from the Bible. Use the right sources. Be a good teacher. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't get carried away by neglecting the teaching only towards preaching. Don't get carried away only towards preaching. Excellent preaching will involve sound teaching. And sound teaching will bring forth excellent preaching. If you find a great preacher but not sound doctrine, stay away. And if you find a great preacher with sound doctrine, praise God. Continue to be sharp in the word of God. Hallelujah. All praise God. So when you teach and follow the word of God, your life, your life will preach the message of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your life preach the message of Christ as you follow Hallelujah. the word of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's close. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are a good teacher. You are the only good teacher. Amen. And you have created many teachers by filling them with yourself, O oh God, the Holy Spirit. Help us to discern right teaching from false teaching. As believers, help us to know the word. When we hear anything, help us to cross, verify, as the believers did, from the word of God. Help us not to take the easy way out of just listening to preachers and, and forming our doctrines. But help us to read. I believe, I pray, O oh Lord, each one of us, we get into your word every day. And as we open your word, God the Holy Spirit, lead us into some doctrine. Thank you, Lord. That when your word enters our heart, our life, there is a transformation. Lord, help us and others see the transformation brought in by your word into our lives. We give you praise and glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Continue to be with us and come the rest of the time into your hands. In the bush was mighty most holy name of Amen. 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 Hallelujah.